When the Greeks buried their dead, they put a coin under the corpse's tongue so that his soul could pay the fare on the ferry that crossed the river Styx. It was Charon who rowed the boat. He was a miser. Souls who couldn't pay for the ride had to wait on this side of the river. Sometimes they came back to haunt those who hadn't given them the fare. On the other side of the river was a great wall. Its gate was guarded by Cerberus, a three-headed dog who had an appetite for live meat and attacked everyone but spirits. Beyond the gate in Tartarus was a great wide field shaded by black poplars. Here lived the dead, heroes and cowards, soldiers, shepherds, priests, minstrels, slaves. They wandered back and forth aimlessly. When they spoke, they twittered like bats. Here they awaited trial by three judges, Minos, Radamanthus, and Aeacus. Those who had particularly displeased the gods were given special punishment. Sisyphus must always push a huge rock uphill. Each time he gets it halfway up, it breaks loose and rolls down to the bottom. And he must begin again. And this he will do for all time. Tantalus has been given a burning thirst and set chin deep in a cool, clear stream of water. But every time he bends his lips to the water, it shrinks away, and he can never drink. Here he will stand as long as Sisyphus rolls his stone. But these are special cases. Most of the souls were judged to be not too good and not too bad, but simply dead. They went back to the field which is called the field of Asphodel to wait for nothing. Those judged to be of unusual virtue were sent to the Elysian fields close by. Here it was always holiday. The air was full of music. The shades danced and played all day long. All night long, too. For the dead need no sleep. Also, these happy spirits had the option of being reborn on Earth. Only the bravest accepted. There was a special part of the Lysium called the Isles of the Blessed. Here lived those who had been three times born and three times gained the Lysium. Hades and his queen lived in a great palace made of black rock. He was very jealous of his brothers and scarcely ever left his domain. He was fiercely possessive, gloated over every new arrival, and demanded a head count from Charon at the close of each day. Never did he allow any of his subjects to escape, nor did he allow a mortal to visit Tartarus and return. There were only two exceptions to this rule, and those are other stories. The palace grounds and the surrounding fields were called Erebus. This was the deepest part of the underworld. No birds flew here, the sound of wings was heard. For well, here lived the Arinis, or Furies, who were older than the gods. Their names were Tisiphone, Alecto, and Magira. They were hags with snaky hair, red hot eyes, and yellow teeth. They slashed the air with metal-studded whips, and when they found a victim, they whipped the flesh from his bones. Their task was to visit Earth and punish evildoers, especially those who had escaped other punishment. They were greatly feared. No one dared say their name. They were referred to as the Eumenides, or kindly ones. Hades valued them. They enriched his kingdom, for their attentions persuaded people to suicide. He enjoyed their conversation. When they returned to Erebus after their work was done, they circled low over the palace grounds, screaming their tale and the latest gossip. Hades was well cast to rule the dead. He was violent, loathed change, 
and was given to slow black rage. His most dramatic hour was when he kidnapped Persephone and made her his queen. But that belongs to the next story.